The most sweeping changes to China's COVID-19 policy since the pandemic began. Will the loosened rule spell good news for the economy? But another challenge waiting on the horizon. The trouble with this zero COVID policy is that overall, few people have had infections. Nearly 50 more Chinese police outposts around the globe exposed by a new report. Three U.S. states taking aim at social media app TikTok within a week. The platform now banned from government devices there. And Washington halting its microchip curbs on China. Struggling to comply with the original law, trade groups are pushing for more relaxed rules. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China is announcing the most sweeping changes to its tough anti-COVID-19 policy since the pandemic began. The shift loosens rules that curb the spread of the virus, but hobbled China's economy and sparked nationwide protests. Let's zoom in. China announced on Wednesday the most sweeping changes to its tough anti-COVID restrictions since the pandemic began three years ago. Following the weeks of unrest that recently hit the country over the measures. The relaxation of rules include allowing infected people with mild or no symptoms to quarantine at home and dropping testing for people traveling within China. The announcement quickly became the most viewed topic on China's social media platform Weibo, but some expressed worries about the greater potentials for infections. Liang Wanian, the National Health Commission official, tried to ease some of those worries. The optimization of the policy is not completely opening up without prevention. It is a proactive optimization rather than reactive. Wednesday's announcement is the strongest sign yet that Beijing is preparing its 1.5 billion people to live with the disease. Although China's borders remain mostly shut, searches on Chinese travel sites within the country surged. Travel platforms from Trip.com to Tuna set searches for air tickets to cities such as the tourist spot of Sanya and Harbin jumped as much as seven times after the news of the loser rules was announced. Cities across China were gripped by the protests over its tough COVID policies last month although they later petered out under a heavy police presence. Cities and regions around the country started announcing a mishmash of easing measures that fed expectations for Wednesday's announcement. But that has set off a rush for preventative drugs as some residents, particularly the unvaccinated elderly, feel more vulnerable to the virus. Authorities across the country have warned of tight supplies and price gouging from retailers in recent days. COVID-19 antigen testing kits, as well as medicine for fevers and colds, are in demand in China. Residents fear the country's recent easing of COVID-19 restrictions could cause an uptick in infections. JD Health, the largest online healthcare platform in China, says sales of antigen test kits jumped nearly 350% last week compared to the week before. One Beijing resident said he bought 50 antigen test kits, plus N95 face masks, Tylenol and ibuprofen. A shop assistant in the city said he had never seen so many customers come to buy fever medication in one day. Responding to the buy-up, a state-run media said, quote, there is no scientific basis for irrationally buying and hoarding specific drugs. <laughs> Meanwhile, protests continue in China. Tuesday night, students from Anhui Medical University in eastern China gathered on the campus. They began shouting the word vacation, asking for permission to leave campus earlier for winter break. <laughs> Students from Chengdu Sports University in southeast China raised the same request. Over the past three years, college students from all over China have repeatedly been locked inside their campuses due to the pandemic. The policy has angered many. Now, students are looking to travel home early for winter vacation. That's ahead of next month's Lunar New Year holiday, a major travel season in China, and a time for increased virus infection risk. Those travel concerns appear to span outside college campuses too, 
According to a newly published study, Chinese citizens are reluctant to travel abroad, even if borders are reopened. It's a sign that consumer recovery from COVID-19 measures will take time. The Oliver Wyman Consultancy study found that a little over half of the 4,000 surveyed plan to delay international travel. And when they do, short-haul destinations will be the first considered. China was formerly the world's largest outbound tourism market, spending close to $130 billion on such trips in 2019. But now leisure vacations have virtually disappeared after China closed international borders in early 2020 and curbed non-essential travel. As one challenge fades for China, another might be waiting on the horizon. Chinese authorities are loosening the world's toughest COVID-19 curbs. But a virologist says it will prove difficult for the country to oust the policy. Lawrence Young, professor at Warwick Medical School, warns that low infection rates mean large swaths of China's population have no immunity. On top of that, a research model shows China could face a million deaths from the virus this winter. Here's more. I think what we're going to see is a, an adherence, at least in principle, to a zero COVID policy whilst easing restrictions in certain parts of the country to counter the problems they have both with the social and the economic uh, impact of this very strict policy. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has held up zero COVID as proof of the superiority of China's system compared with Western countries. But Yong says the policy carries risks. The trouble with this zero COVID policy is that overall few people have had infections. In fact, it's estimated that something like only 1.5 million out of a population of 1.4 billion people have had infections. Um, therefore, they haven't had the immunity that comes from being infected. Young says China's mass vaccination programs were not very successful as zero COVID created vaccine hesitation among people. So what you've got is a population who are very, very susceptible to infection and to developing severe disease, which could put untold pressure on the healthcare system, given the limited number of um, intensive care beds, for instance. Young says other countries should pay attention to the situation in China, not only for the economic consequences of zero COVID, but also the risks of new variants. So one, one concern for all of us is if you've got a very large population who are susceptible and becoming infected, that's a breeding ground for new variants. China is the only major country still trying to stamp out COVID transmission. Beijing's transnational policing efforts may span much further than previously believed. A recent report exposed a number of overseas China-run police offices stationed across the U.S., Canada and Europe. Now, human rights group Safeguard Defenders is revealing an additional 48 outposts. The new discovery brings the global total to 102 stations, some of them set up with help from the host countries. According to the reports, the offices provide administrative services to Chinese citizens stuck overseas during the pandemic, but they also serve more sinister purposes, like tracking down, arresting and extraditing people wanted by the Chinese Communist Party. Targets are said to include dissidents who disagree with the regime and its leader Xi Jinping. The policing network has made a presence in 53 nations so far. Beijing denied running undeclared police stations abroad after the first report. It called the allegations an attempt to smear China's reputation. The initial discovery spurred investigations in at least 13 countries. Ireland and the Netherlands closed the stations that were found in their countries. Spain is investigating, while Canada filed official complaints with its Chinese ambassador. FBI Director Christopher Wray also voiced concerns last month about the office discovered in New York City. Within a week, three U.S. states have blacklisted short video platform TikTok. Joining South Dakota and South Carolina, Maryland has become the latest state to ban the Chinese-owned social media app from government devices. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan announced a directive yesterday. He cited the software's potential for spying on government entities and gathering users' information. U.S. officials have repeatedly warned that TikTok could steal data from U.S. citizens 
and pose a threat to national security. The ban also covers other companies, such as Huawei and China's state-owned tech firm ZTE. The directive also bans the use of messenger WeChat and transaction service Alipay, which operates under online retail giant Alibaba. The rule means government agencies must remove the software from state networks. A halt on U.S. curbs for Chinese-made microchips. On Tuesday, Congress scaled back some of the new measures and corporate pushback. U.S. federal agencies and their contractors were originally prohibited from using Chinese chips made by certain blacklisted companies, based on a measure from September. But the final law no longer forbids contractors from using Chinese-made chips and pushes the compliance deadline back five years. It also narrows the restrictions, which now only affect items used in critical systems like intelligence and military. The move comes as American companies struggle to comply with the original law, called the National Defense Authorization Act. Chinese-made chips are commissioned by companies all over the world and are used in almost everything. Since chips aren't usually labeled with manufacturer names, identifying them would be difficult and costly. The Biden administration rolled out sweeping export controls in October, banning Chinese companies from buying advanced chips and chip-making equipment without a license. The final version of the legislation, introduced on Tuesday, is expected to pass the Senate and the House this month. A potential new threat to U.S. national security posed by a Chinese state-controlled shipping platform. Some lawmakers are drawing attention to the digital logistics system. They say it could provide the Chinese Communist Party with sensitive U.S. government and military data. Beijing is offering the platform to freight carriers, ports and foreign nations, and it's free of charge. China calls it a one-stop shop for data management and tracking shipments. It's subsidized by the country's Ministry of Transport. Over 20 global ports are already using the platform. Senator Tom Cotton and Congress member Michelle Steele called it a disaster for American interests in a letter to President Biden. They worry the CCP could exploit it to identify early trends in the movement of U.S. military supplies and equipment. While at the same time denying other countries the same data on Chinese military assets. Over 25 lawmakers signed the letter urging Biden to take action. The U.S. Secretaries of State and Defense met with their Australian counterparts in Washington on Tuesday. The focus of the meeting, to counter increasing aggression by the Chinese communist regime in the region. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says Washington will boost its military presence in the Indo-Pacific region. Here are the details. We're increasingly weaving together our alliances in Europe and Asia, in the Atlantic, and across the Pacific because the challenges and threats that those alliances face are increasingly interconnected. He was accompanied by U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin at a meeting with Australian Foreign Minister Penelope Wong and Australian Defense Minister Richard Miles. We'll also expand our logistics and sustainment cooperation, and that will deepen our interoperability and create more agile and re resilient capabilities. We'll also continue to find ways to further integrate our defense industrial bases in the years ahead. The group also discussed the progress of the security partnership between the U.S., Australia and the U.K. Our three countries have made significant strides toward Australia obtaining nuclear-powered submarines while adhering to the highest non-proliferation standards. Australia's defense minister said it's a huge step that America is taking. It will transform Australia's strategic posture. It will increase our capability dramatically. Um, and we are deeply grateful for the work that we've been able to do with the United States in developing that. Miles said he and Foreign Minister Penny Wong would invite Japan to participate in more exercises with Australia and the United States in upcoming talks with Japan in Tokyo. Frequent military collaborations between the U.S. and Australia have already been going on in Australia's Northern Territory, with thousands of U.S. Marines rotating through the territory annually for training and joint exercises. Last month's meeting between Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Chinese leader Xi Jinping at the G20 was a step towards normalizing ties. 
But Australian diplomats say it won't change Canberra's defence policy. Cost MNS, NTD News. China responded to the meeting, saying it doesn't welcome the U.S.'s pledge to increase its military presence in Australia. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Three U.S. states have banned TikTok from government devices. But what's happening on the federal level given the lobbying in Congress? Basically, ByteDance and TikTok are exploiting a loophole in U.S. law to register as domestic lobbyists and not as uh, foreign agents. And if they were to register as foreign agents, there would be a lot more information that is publicly available about who they're meeting, the issues that they're lobbying on, uh, even the text of the contract um, that uh, this lobbying team uh, has uh, used to work with TikTok. Jimmy Quint, national security correspondent of the National Review, breaks it down. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.